morning to all of you. Uh, in this lecture series, which has been arranged by the MET division of Dr. RML Hospital, I have been assigned to speak upon the introduction as well as review of literature, which is you are going to write in your protocol. So what is an introduction? What does it do? As the name suggests, introduction introduces the topic. First of all, it introduces the uh, basic disease, then the subject and lastly, the tools and hence justifies the studies. Let me give you an example. Suppose, for example, this is an era of COVID-19 and an MD medicine student thinks that, okay, I am going to do a study in COVID-19, the prevalence and predictors of mortality and or maybe probably the fasting and PP insulin levels in type 2 diabetics admitted with COVID-19 in a tertiary care center of Delhi. Similarly, another uh, uh, PG from Gaini plans that okay I am planning to do some folate deficiency or maybe prevalence of anemia in pregnant ladies infected with COVID-19 and some MD psychiatry student is planning to do but I have written you can see the prevalence of uh, anxiety and depression in patients with COVID-19 as assessed by hospital anxiety and depression scale and its correlation with the severity of disease. So. In all these three studies done by an MD medicine student, MS gynae student and MD psychiatry student, the basic disease is COVID-19. So your first paragraph of introduction will start with something about COVID-19. So how do you start that? COVID-19 is a disease which started from Wuhan in November 2019 and has reached the pandemic level. Uh, the mortality with COVID-19 has been seen to be 3.4 to 5 percent and uh, multiple organ dysfunction has also been seen. No drug treatment is available. So this is the way your first paragraph. You know, introduction is an inverted triangle. The upper major part, the broadest part is the basic disease. Then you narrow down to your subject, your topic, and then you narrow down to the tools or your materials and method. So the basic disease here is COVID-19 and it seems that uh, the first paragraph about what is COVID-19, what, uh, what are the side effects complication we have seen with COVID-19, the first paragraph will be the same in all the three studies. So first paragraph is for the basic disease. The second paragraph here, the all the three students deviate because for the first student, the subject is diabetes. For the second, the subject is pregnancy. And for the third, the subject is anxiety and depression. Mm -hmm. So the second paragraph, for example, the psychiatry student is writing uh, that anxiety and depression has been seen to be in 20 to 25% of normal general population. There are many predictors of anxiety and depression in general population like low socioeconomic status, then single nuclear families, the lack of their own house or single room house, no vehicle for transportation. So this is the way the second paragraph will be written. The third paragraph is regarding the tools or material methods and like you can see this time the tool is hospital anxiety and depression scale. So you know introduction first paragraph regarding the basic disease second regarding the subject and the third regarding a tool. So the third paragraph you will simply say about what is a hospital anxiety and depression scale. What are the results we have seen in general population or the controls. How, uh, how can we compare hospital anxiety and depression scale with Hamilton scale or any other good scale which the psychiatrists have been using as a gold standard. These will be the first one to third paragraph. So by the end of third paragraph, we know everything about the basic disease, the subject and the methods. Now you will start speaking upon or you will write something from the studies which have done the similar to the your topic which you have chosen. So now the fourth paragraph will be regarding because you have already discussed everything. Now the fourth paragraph will be regarding that prevalence of anxiety and depression in patients with COVID-19 has been seen to be 30 to 35 percent. The major predictors which have been seen are uh, low saturation at the time of admission, high ferritin level, high IL-6 levels. It has been done by the Hamilton scale or something other scales also. However, whether it has been done with hats or not, that's a different thing. But you know, what does the introduction do? It tells you about what is the material method which people have used before. First of all, obviously, yes, it tells you the statement of the problem, the importance of the subject area. 
and then what is the magnitude what is the frequency of the disease what is the frequency of covid 19 the anxiety depression in patients with general population as well as covid 19 also and it also tells you about what are the lacuna what do you know do not know so the controversies the lacuna is also mentioned in and the gaps are also mentioned in the introduction so introduction should be brief and to the point it should not be more than two pages because it's a protocol here the maximum pages you can use for introduction is two to three however in thesis you can use five to six pages always remember that do not be very very apprehensive or critical about others result it has been published if the results have been published the paper has been published in the pubmed index journal we take it as granted that this must have gone through a peer review so whatever are the results just mention that maybe the results are not matching to your hypothesis doesn't matter the literature must not be old remember uh, by the by the time you will submit your thesis it will be 2022 yes and then after that you will not get time to write a paper because that will be your third apg then when you cross your third apg you will get married you will you will uh, enjoy obviously by the end of second year of assessment it is the time most of the people do write the paper so right now from day 1 from today it will take almost 5 more years to publish a paper from the present thesis so what happens please try to pick up the research or papers which have been published within the last 5 years because then at the time of publication these paper will become 10 years old if it is more than that actually the quality of reference goes down very bad so old paper suppose you are picking up a paper which has been published in 2013 by the time you will publish the paper in 2014 it will be 11 or 12 years old what is the relevance of that science is a absolutely ever changing concept so please try to keep new papers uh there should be western data also there should be indian data also western why because you know in us either the doctors are treating doctors or the doctors are researchers so the people who are in research they have a lot of manpower logistic they do a proper research of 500 1000 patient 2000 patient so the so the chances of biasing is very very low and that's why the quality of paper is very good however in india most of the doctors are treating doctors they are not researchers so it is difficult to take 100 more than 100 or 200 patients and then there may be some missing points also so you should have western data but you should also have indian data because it is the data of the indian patients which correlates and associates best to the people whom you are taking who are actually indian so the demographic socio economic phenotypic genotypically since we the the indian data matches us that is why we need indian studies also but again from la, pub, those studies which are published in reputed pubmed index journal at least not from index copernicus So these are some simple rules for writing a literature review introduction review of literature that first of all define a topic and the subject search reread the literature keep that literature in your mind write it in your own language in notes and always keep the reference number in the last you should the review should be very much focused towards the disease which you are looking upon but yes it should be made interesting also be critical and consistent and keep a logical structure making from a basic disease topic and lastly the tools also and yes be up to date not more than 5 years old studies so this was all about introduction let us speak something about review of literature also how does introduction and review of literature differ introduction was introducing your thesis topic introducing the disease the subjects and the tools now by the end of introduction everyone the the person who is reading your protocol or thesis knows what is what what is you are planning to do so please do not mention now about covid what is covid what is anxiety what is depression now everyone knows about what is anxiety what is depression what is covid now the review of literature means the studies which are maximally similar to your topic look up on pick up on those studies read these studies and write whatever the findings these studies have found in their paper so the review of literature gives you the justification for the plan project that yes this has been done previously and this is a justified topic where definitely you are going to find whether results are yes or no so if someone is trying to uh, just check what is the uh how many vegetarians had covid 19 how many non vegetarians had covid 19 what is this rubbish 
COVID-19 spreads through respiratory droplets, but difference wedge or non-wedge will make. So you will not get this type of paper in Google. Why? Because it is absolutely unjustified nonsense topic. So if you get some review of literature, good review of literature, that means you are just you are doing a nice topic. It is a justified one. So it provides a justification to your planned project also. Apart from that, it tells you about the current knowledge about the similar topic which you have taken for your thesis. Just do not mention that, okay, Gupta PK at Hall, they have found that uh, the prevalence of anxiety depression in pa patient with COVID is 34%. Similarly, Nitin Sina at all have found the prevalence of anxiety depression as 30%. Ajay Chauhan has found the prevalence of anxiety depression about 35%. What difference will it make? Uh, amongst the three studies, the study which you feel is the best written one, published in the best possible journal with the maximum number of patients with proper stats. Just mention that study. A single study because 26%, 30%, 34% is comparable. However, you, you need to see which is the good study. Then include maximum studies with good number of patients which are related to your topic. Not Do not deviate from your topic. Now, you do not need to add anything about what is COVID-19. You do not need to add anything about what is the prevalence of anxiety, depression in general population. Because now we are speaking only about anxiety, depression in patients with COVID-19 by HAT score. Maybe you can add some study which says that they have checked anxiety, depression by Hamilton score. Another have checked anxiety, depression in COVID-19 by another score. Then you look whether you have a study which has done anxiety depression in COVID-19 by HAT score because that gives you the proposed material and method that what is the easiest however applicable method which has good sensitivity and specificity in picking up on your results. So it actually tells you about the proposed material methods also for the study you are planning to do. So what should be included? You should include studies which help to define the problem like for any study which tells you that the prevalence of anxiety depression in patients with COVID-19 is 35% because by this study you are going to get your sample size also. So that is why you need a good study which has been published in a good index journal. Then previous studies which suggest some prevalence of prevalent, uh, uh, this abnormality of condition even in controls because it is controls only with whom you compare your results also. Then. Your hypothesis is that the prevalence of anxiety depression is more in patients with COVID as against as compared to control population. This is a hypothesis. Suppose your results at the end of thesis comes out negative that the prevalence of anxiety depression in patients with COVID-19 is only 15% as compared to 20% in control population. So your hypothesis is uh, uh, becomes negative. So that is why always keep data or studies which are for your research hypothesis and even against your research hypothesis because remember the, the, if the results go with the research hypothesis, that is nothing new. But if you get the results, genuine results, honest results, which are against your research hypothesis, the chances of getting this paper published is much higher as compared to the previous one. Because the previous is again me too. Again, keep 50% Indian data, 50% Western data and preferably new data with a large number of patients. And yes, 3-4 studies with support your hypothesis and equal number of studies which reject your hypothesis also. With studies to be selected, obviously studies which pertain to your thesis topic absolutely more or less similar to your thesis topic, preferably from PubMed Index Journal, not from Copernicus, not from Conference Abstracts. You can use standard textbooks. In every medicine thesis, we have at least one or two reference from Harrison and it's a standard textbook. No, no one can question Harrison. Studies should be presented in an unbiased way. You, have, you are just starting your study. We do not know what will be the end results. So stay unbiased. And yes, this is important that uh, we never know what our results will come, whether it will be positive or negative. So what not to include? This is again a very important question, what not to include. Studies which provide the first description of a well-known problem. Studies which tell you that uh, in 1972 rheumatoid, the prevalence of osteoporosis in rheumatoid arthritis was found to be uh, 20%. Damn, what difference will it make? Now we know everything about osteoporosis, we know everything about rheumatoid arthritis. So it, the old studies, just first description we do not need. Similarly, do not trace the history. Again, like me too studies. Me, I am saying 34%, Nitin is saying 26%, Ajay Chauhan is saying 30%. No. Just a single one will suffice. 
and all those studies published in non index journals and especially conference abstracts i have seen many times even my pages also who are just mentioning a reference with a single page i immediately get up the point that this is actually a conference abstract see big big conferences like uh, epicon which are uh, done by api 26000 people register for that all 3000 papers who are presented as poster or oral they are published in the supplement of japi you can sometimes i have seen people picking up on the data from the uh, these conference abstracts also this is absolutely a biased they, there is no peer review for these papers who have been presented in a conference and many conferences are uh, pharmaceutical motivated also so please do not mention any do not give reference of anything which has been published as a conference abstract even as corporate reports also even unpublished thesis do not take any data from unpublished thesis until a, unless a thesis or a paper has gone through a peer review through a reviewer it is not at all acceptable there are lot of biasing lot of statistical uh, failures also so what do you use first of all you use books you use journal articles you can use government policies also any any person who is doing a study on hiv or tuberculosis since these are public pro government programs so you may need to get some data from narco or government policies but conference proceedings and corporate reports please do not add these so how to write a study report coming to the end while writing a paragraph in rol you have taken a paper that which looks to be almost the same as what you are picking upon you are trying to write upon your topic result So always include the place and the year of the study publication after the first name author. Then mention what was evaluated, the the subjects and few details of the study population. Then mention their results, including the important statistics also like the odds ratio, the p value, uh, uh, the the relative risk also. These give weightage to your paragraph, the relevant points from the discussion and conclusion. and after a study you use for your for your research literature give it a proper reference number and superscript it and please do not miss this number because many a times i have seen people with lots of paper and they are looking for where is that paper where i picked up this material so let me give you an example how to write a paragraph in review literature in a study conducted by gupta pk et al so this was the gentleman it is me actually gupta pk et al in northern india northern india was the place where the study was done in 2017 year the prevalence of osteoporosis the disease or the topic basically not that that just the disease in 200 patients with hiv subjects was studied this is the way you write the first line now write their results please do not copy paste read the paper make it your own language keep the the best possible part inside this single paragraph they found that 20% of the cases with hiv have reduced bone mineral density out of which half had osteoporosis see the figure they have absolutely mentioned 20% long duration of disease late initiation of art and protease inhibitor were found to be significantly associated with low bmd in these individual these are the results which have been found from the discussion and results however on multivariate analysis only tuberculosis within the last 6 months was found to be significantly associated with low bmd so this is the way you pick up or you take the crunch the best of the paper which has been written and write it like that now coming to the lacuna in existing knowledge uh, the unclear results or data which is not available for india there are a lot of data which is not available for india from india then the results which are not acceptable or applicable in clinical context or any new test suppose for example i am looking upon uh, cytokratin 18 to predict nafld in patient with type 2 diabetes but this test has not been approved so we write the lacuna in existing knowledge that cytokratin 18 as a biomarker for detection of nafld has not been validated or not been read Uh, thoroughly in this part of the world or in india hence the present study is being planned so this is the way you write the lacuna in existing knowledge last but not the least do anything do everything but please be honest do not do plagiarism never copy and paste read the paper keep it in your mind jungle the words write it in your own language modify it and write the results properly and even after that in spite of the that give a proper reference number with a subscription at the end by this i would like to end thank you very much jai hind